Hey, good morning. Um, it's been a long time. I understand that uh, work has been very slow here at the at the on the Alberg 30. And uh, so let me just give you a quick update uh, where we are and what's going on here. Um, it's still a total freaking disaster, as you can tell. I have I've removed this bulkhead here. I had to clear away this drawer and took out part of this um, part of the uh, the V berth and open up all the way back toward the uh, the water tank here. Um, I'll do more work on that later, but this is what I'm working on right now. This is the, the mass support beam. As I mentioned, it's got a, it's got a bow. Um, the pressure from the mast is obviously taking its toll. I took off the quarter inch aluminum plates that were um, sandwiched this beam fore and aft. Um, I bought some new mahogany. I was going to go with white oak, but I decided on mahogany um, to replace this. And instead of sandwiching it vertically like it is now, I can show you here. It's sandwiched vertically um, in the original, and that doesn't make any sense. It's like a leaf spring. Of course, it's going to sag. Um, anyway, so this is, uh, I got to get this out. And in order to get this out, I've got to get um, these two bolts out. I've got one nut off over here. This nut is seized with some corrosion, and so I'm working on that now. Well, I'm always working by myself, so I've got to find um, creative ways to hold tools when I'm working on both sides, uh, inside and outside the boat. And so here, what I did was I put uh, a series of screws and some uh, whipping twine to hold my wrench in place while I attempt to um, unscrew it from the outside. Only these two go through to the other side. I don't know what these are screwed into. Um, these other four. This is the one that we're work, working with here. This is the problem right here. Just want that as cleaned out as I can. Um, it's early morning hours. Um, probably what I gotta do is come out here and tap on these and and work on it a bit more, but it is, um, it's Sunday morning and I've gotta, I gotta get back to the house uh, in a little bit. I can't work on this much today. Um, next weekend I won't be here again, but we'll let that sit with the liquid wrench and we'll come out here and talk about it again. Um, before I go though, I'm going to, um, here. Uh, I bought this old fire hose. It's, um, was it one and a half inch um, diameter fire hose? Um, it's 20 feet, and so I'm going to go ahead and cut, uh, I don't know, 18, 20 inches um, and make four pieces and then redo my, um, my chafe protection. I would prefer something a little bit bigger like this than the, the hoses that I have. I have just plain old garden hose. You can see that over there. And that's been working fine, but um, I'm going to go with this. Well, as you can imagine, um, it's going to take some more time for this boat to get ready. And frankly, I'm jonesing to actually sail. And because I live so far away from the sailing area, it's hard for me to find people who, you know, to create opportunities to go sailing on their boats. I certainly can't go on mine. So instead, this is what I decided to do. I bought a small boat. She's not the prettiest thing, but she is set up for sailing already. And so while work continues with the Alberg 30, uh, and I'm still months away from getting that, those sails hoisted and sailing, I can sail this one and satiate that need to spend time on the water. So this is a 1975 Tanzer 22. It, it displaces 2,900 pounds. It's got an iron keel weighing 1,250 pounds and a nice deep cockpit. 
that uh, makes it for a 22 footer really quite nice and stable and, uh, and it feels really good sailing it. It is a fin keel with a transom hung rudder and you might notice the Tahatsu. I grabbed that off the Alberg and threw it on the back of this boat. You know, it's got some wear and tear. It's, um, what is it, 40, uh, 46 years old, 45 years old. Um, but the sails are in good condition. The mass is straight. The rigging is, uh, is still strong. It comes with a working knot meter or log. And the depth sounder works as well. The rigging lights all work. Um, there were a couple leaks. You can see that the four hatch I did cover in plastic temporarily. Uh, it's got a um, an aftermarket vent top um, in it, and that's now leaking after how many I don't know how many years it's been in there. Um, and someone tried to paint it. Not too long ago. It used to have green non-skid along the, the, the fore deck here. You can see where it's still left unpainted, though on the other side they, they attempted to start painting it. Uh, they didn't do a very nice job in the cockpit. They, they painted half of it also. Um, uh, C'est la vie. The idea here is that I'm going to take it sailing. And that's exactly what I need to do. And this morning we've got... Uh, eight to ten knots of wind on the Columbia River. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. Have some lunch here and we do a little work, a little exploring. Oh my f god, <laughs> I cannot believe this thing has not been on this whole time. Okay, because I'm a moron, I just missed all those Canada geese. I thought I was filming them. It was a huge flock, there must have been, I don't know, a couple thousand birds. Here is inside the boat and it's a total mess. I'll have to give you a better view next time, but while I'm here. Um, we go inside, we've got a, a quarter berth here to starboard. We've got another quarter berth plus a dinette to port. The dinette is up, of course it's covered with all of my bedding. Uh, we've got a, a small ice fridge down below there, um, which has seen better days. Um, a, um, a sink in the galley. Um, forward of the bulkhead, we've got the V-berth, uh, the porta potty and um, and that's where the battery and the uh, electrical panel is, is stored also. So this is what we got going on here right now. The thing works pretty well. Again, it's a disaster currently, but um, you know, it's, uh, it's certainly usable. And getting out here to places like this uh, is exactly the reason I bought this little boat. Um, I wanted to be able to go ahead and venture around a little bit while I continue to work on the Albert 30. deer here. Look at the size of it. Yeah. With a little one too. 
it's kind of nice. They've got a place for picnics, for barbecues, and for a uh, fire. They've got a fire pit here right alongside the beach. Now, February is clearly not the time to be to come around, although it is a nice day. It's got to be in the 50s somewhere. Breeze is up. Good sailing day. And I'm just over that way. So I'm just walking along the shore, um, checking out the side of the river, and I came across this little path right here. These little streaks. And you see that they lead up the bank. I, I hope it'll, it'll come out on the GoPro here. And you can clearly see that it goes up into the grass area. It's a, kind of a well-worn track, so I'm wondering, okay, well, what's using this so much that they're making a trail here? And so the trail comes up, and I don't know if you can tell here, but you've got two. You've got the side over here, and it looks like things, things have been dragged over the, over the side. You see these gouges in the grass. So something has been dragged over, and of course, so they come up, and here is where they, they join or diverge, depending on which way you're going to go. So, just kind of walking up. And you can see that this, that the trail kind of gets diffused here. It's not as, uh, as particular or as, as, uh, as clear as it is here. Um, but then you look up into the distance and I walked by this big piece of wood. It's a down tree here, um, kind of where this fans out. And so I'm walking over, and when I was walking past this tree, um, I don't know, half an hour ago, whatever, I was wondering where all the limbs went. Where's the top of this tree? Did someone clear this out? Did they burn it? Like, what happened to this thing? And then the answer came to me. This right here is the clue. That is the work of a beaver. So a beaver came over you can see it here too, and cleared away the top of this entire tree. And you can see it's outlined all the leaves and such. And they just left some small twigs here and there. Of course we're in Oregon. We've got a real and true composting head. I won't get into the gritty details, but they've got actual sawdust here. 